Can you believe our daughter is coming home and we don't have a room for her? This is troubling. Can you move out this time? I was shocked to hear these words suddenly from my mother-in-law. In the house where I had been living with my husband's family. My mother-in-law labeled me as a bad wife who doesn't do household chores and criticized me daily. Then, they wanted to kick me out to make room for my husband's sister who was coming home for childbirth. We can't keep an incompetent person who contributes nothing to the family any longer. Hurry up and leave so we can free up the room. My name is Tracy. I'm a 33-year-old office worker. After graduating from college, I joined a well-known, large company in my hometown, actively working and living the life of a working adult. As a salesperson, I find fulfillment in dealing with various clients and advancing negotiations. I built my career overcoming numerous challenges and became accustomed to my job. That's when I met Nick, who would later become my husband. Nick, two years my senior, was the section chief at a client company. We became close through work, gradually sharing personal stories as well as business discussions. I was gradually drawn to Nick's sincere and kind nature. Apparently, he was attracted to my serious approach to work. It was embarrassing but also very pleasing to hear this later. Our relationship naturally evolved into a romance, and we got married when I turned 30. We rented an apartment in an area with good access to both of our workplaces and started our married life. After marriage, I was promoted to a managerial position, leading a satisfying life both at work and personally. However, there was one concern. My mother-in-law's occasional visits. She, having devoted herself to homemaking from a young age, believes that a daughter-in-law should perfectly handle household chores. Tracy, you've left some dishes and washed again. And look at all these piled up laundry. You're so sloppy. What kind of upbringing did you have? My mother-in-law would say these harsh words whenever she found the opportunity during her weekend visits. I planned to clean up that day, but the atmosphere didn't allow for any rebuttal, and all I could say was, I'm sorry. In reality, I've always focused on my career and was not good at housework. Therefore, my inability to handle household chores made her look down on me as incompetent. When I was single, I rarely cooked and usually did all the cleaning and laundry on my weekends. After marriage, to reduce the burden of household chores, I invested in home appliances like cleaning robots. Nick understands my personality and doesn't force me to do household chores. On the contrary, I'm truly grateful to him for cooking dinner and doing laundry when he returns home earlier than me. Mom, Tracy is working hard every day and doesn't have much time. Please don't complain. Nick would defend me whenever his mother said something, but she would just get upset without listening. Oh, that reminds me, Nick. Our finances are a bit tight this month. Can you send a little more money home? Suddenly, my previously upset mother-in-law would start making brazen demands with a smile. I sighed inwardly, thinking, not again, and resigned myself to the situation. There are many family members living in the house where my parents and Laura side. Currently, Nick's parents, brother, and grandparents are living there. Until a while ago, Nick's sister, Lauren, lived with them and contributed to the household expenses by working, but recently she got married and left the house. As a result, only my father-in-law and brother-in-law were working after that, leading to a decrease in household income, and they came to struggle financially. In reality, their income was lower than that of our household. Nick started to provide financial support to his parents' home, but his mother frequently visited us, demanding more money. I think it was okay to refuse considering our own household budget, but Nick couldn't ignore his family's suffering. After some hesitation, Nick agreed to her demands. Okay, I'll send a bit more. That's my Nick. Unlike someone else, you understand. My mother-in-law was satisfied with his answer and gave me a glance. I felt dissatisfied but didn't argue back. I wanted to move away from my husband's family. But our home was convenient for commuting, and it was hard to suggest moving considering his situation. However, our lives changed afterward. There was an issue with the care of Nick's grandparents, who lived in the family home. 
Originally, my mother-in-law and Lauren were in charge of the care, but ever since Lauren left, Nick's mother's burden increased. It seemed that my father-in-law and brother-in-law left the care to the women and hardly helped. After discussing with Nick, we decided to live together with his family. As we didn't have children, I agreed to this decision but set one condition for Nick. I wanted to continue focusing on my job instead of using my salary for household expenses. I strongly wanted to keep my job and had no intention of quitting. When I expressed my intention, Nick agreed. Of course, you don't have to quit your job. I don't want to involve you in my family's problems. But I'm sorry it turned out this way. Nick said apologetically. Indeed, living together might increase my mother-in-law's sarcasm. This was my only concern, but we decided to start living with his family, with me continuing my job to support the household and Nick mainly handling caregiving and housework. However, when we started living together, his family wasn't pleased with our arrangement. It's absurd for Nick to do caregiving and housework. That's the wife's role, said my mother-in-law. It was a response I had partially anticipated, but I wondered why such roles had to be fixed. My parents-in-law and brother-in-law insisted that housework and caregiving were the wife's job and didn't change their opinion. So, they ordered me to reduce my working hours or quit. However, if I were to comply, our income would decrease and we would continue to struggle financially. To support a family of seven, I need to work full-time. I will continue working as a regular employee, I explained and stood my ground. However, my in-laws remained unsatisfied and deepened their displeasure of me. How can someone have such an opinion? I can't believe how disobedient this daughter-in-law is. My mother-in-law exclaimed angrily, and her attitude toward me became even harsher. Afterward, my brother-in-law also criticized me, using work as an excuse not to help mom. What an incompetent wife. Then, both of them began leading the bullying against me. My father-in-law barely intervened and didn't protect me. Nick's grandparents, who returned to their bedroom immediately after dinner, had limited contact with me and showed little interest in me. After starting to live with my in-laws, my work became busier and I often returned home late. When I came home after overtime, the family complained that I should come home earlier, looking down on me as if my job was insignificant. I felt deeply frustrated when they belittled my work. I took pride in my job and was committed to my responsibilities as a manager. However, my in-laws kept telling me to prioritize housework over my job and eventually, I found more peace at work than at my in-law's house. Once, unable to bear the bullying, I complained to Nick. Why am I treated like this despite earning the daily expenses and even paying for new furniture and appliances for your family's house? Nick listened to me seriously. He understood the problems his family would face if I were to quit my job. I'll talk to everyone. I'm really sorry for involving you in my family's issues, Nick said and I was filled with gratitude. He must be tired from doing housework and caregiving after work. Later, Nick tried to discuss it with his whole family, but their opinions didn't change at all. My brother-in-law even angrily accused me. You didn't discipline your wife properly and that's why she has become so selfish. It's your responsibility to train her. My in-laws agreed with him, and their criticism toward us began. I had had enough. The attitude of Nick's own family, who once received financial support from him, was unbearable. Sorry, Nick. I can't live here anymore. We discussed our future seriously in our room. Nick, too, was angry at his family's response and immediately decided, we should end this living arrangement and move out soon. If we were to continue like that, our stress would only increase. Therefore, Nick and I decided to leave the house, began searching for a new residence, and started preparing for our next life, keeping it a secret from his family. Half a month later, on an afternoon, Lauren, my sister-in-law who had left the family home after getting married, returned unexpectedly. It was during the weekend and I was off work, so all of us, including Nick's family, were at home. Seeing Lauren return with a large suitcase, my mother-in-law was overjoyed. Lauren, welcome back. Have you had lunch yet? If not, I'll make something right away. Thanks, Mom. I'm really hungry. 
Lauren passed by Nick and I without greeting us and headed straight to the living room. Hold on a second. Lauren, why did you come back all of a sudden? Nick asked as he entered the living room. Lauren replied, I'm about to have a baby soon. It's my first time, and I feel insecure, so I've decided to come back home for the childbirth. I'll be staying here for a while. My father-in-law and brother-in-law who were watching TV in the living room also seemed to welcome Lauren's return. However, Nick and I were confused. This was because the room Lauren used to use was being used by us then. Indeed, the family home was spacious, but at that time it housed seven people, and there were no vacant rooms. Before I could say anything, my mother-in-law looked at me and sighed dramatically. What a predicament. Lauren is back but we're short of rooms. Tracy, could you leave now that we have this situation? Huh? It took me a moment to grasp the intention behind her words. Well, the room you're using originally belonged to Lauren, right? Now that Lauren is back, it's only proper to give it back to her. My mother-in-law stated clearly. Then she laughed and said, we can't keep a useless person who doesn't help with anything around the house here, can't we? While seeking agreement from the other family members, my father-in-law nodded and my brother-in-law looked at me and laughed. Wait a minute, isn't that unreasonable? Nick argued while I was still in shock. Lauren then haughtily said to me, You're a wife, yet you don't properly take care of the house. There's no point in you being here, just leave already. However, I was the one supporting most of the household expenses. What would happen to this house if I were to leave? Did they even understand that? Hesitating to voice this out, Nick placed his hand on my shoulder and shook his head in resignation. It's okay. Let's leave this house together. Nick's words were filled with determination, and he seemed more reliable and strong than ever. We had already planned to end our cohabitation in the near future so we made the decision sooner. Understood. Then, we will leave right away. At my response, the entire family burst into laughter. Anger welled up in me toward them, who neither held back Nick, who had been supporting them with housework and caregiving, nor did anything else to help him but laugh. The thought of unpleasant people leaving clears my heart. When you leave, make sure to take away all your belongings. My mother-in-law declared, so I quietly nodded. We immediately arranged for a moving company and left the family home with Nick that day. The next day, while temporarily staying at a hotel, we received a call from my mother-in-law. It was surprising that my mother-in-law called my cell phone instead of Nick's, but since I had an idea why, I decided to answer. As soon as I picked up, my mother-in-law's angry voice came through. What's the meaning of this? Today, the movers came and took almost all the furniture and appliances from the house. You arranged it, didn't you? As I was accused, I simply shrugged in resignation and thought, just as I expected. Nick, who was nearby, seemed to hear her voice as well and gave her a smile. The movers I had arranged the day before took away all the household goods, including furniture and appliances. Among them were large items like the dining table and TV, and with most things gone, the family was in complete chaos. I just followed your instructions to take away all my belongings. Everything that was taken was purchased by me. That's why I disposed of them, I replied, and my mother-in-law was at a loss for words. The furniture and appliances that were newly purchased when we started living with them were all actually paid by me. As I asserted they were my personal belongings, my mother-in-law squeezed out a frustrated response. I did say take them away, but this is too much. How are we supposed to live in a house with nothing? She exclaimed angrily, to which I calmly replied. Now that we no longer live together, it's no longer my concern. It must be nice to have a spacious house now that the unpleasant people are gone. I firmly said this, ignored my still complaining mother-in-law, and hung up the phone. I thought she would call back soon, but surprisingly, there was no further call from her. Afterward, Nick and I began a new life in our new home. The furniture and appliances retrieved from the family home were still in good condition, so we moved them into our new place. We spent some peaceful days, but about a month later, we suddenly started receiving frequent calls from the family. Wondering why they were contacting us then, 
I considered blocking the calls, but I hesitated because there was something I wanted to tell them. Busy with work and unable to answer the phone, I came home one day to find a missed call from my mother-in-law. Nick was still at work, having to work overtime, and was not home yet. When I responded to the call, my mother-in-law's irritated voice echoed, You finally picked up. What do you need? I asked, and she hurriedly commanded, Life has become difficult since you two left. Come back home. Apparently, various payments had started to fall behind after we left. Before living together, the family home underwent extensive barrier-free renovations for the grandparents, and there was still a considerable loan to pay. Nick was paying that loan when we lived together with his family. Additionally, the money I earned was used for purchasing furniture, appliances, and monthly household expenses. But after our departure, they struggled to repay the loan and manage the household finances. The monthly living expenses I paid amounted to about $4,300. The family, who had depended on our income and spent recklessly, had no savings. Unable to cover over $4,000 of monthly expenses, they became desperate and asked us to return. I was just appalled by such a selfish request. This is the result of you driving out two earners. We have already started a new life and have no plans to return. I refused clearly. However, my mother-in-law was in yielding, saying, How dare you? This won't do. Put Nick on the phone. Nick is still at work and hasn't returned yet. Actually, we moved to a high-rise condo. We are now living comfortably and peacefully, so we cannot fulfill your unreasonable request, I explained, to which my mother-in-law seemed surprised. Nick and I were secretly searching for a new residence when we were living with his family, and after finding the high-rise condo that met our idle conditions, we were able to move immediately after being ousted from the family home. Does this mean? You're leaving us behind. My mother in law used us with a tearful voice. You have no right to criticize us when you did nothing but depend on our earnings and spent money recklessly. Please don't interfere in our lives anymore, I stated firmly. As soon as I finished speaking, I ended the call without waiting for my mother-in-law's response. I was relieved to have informed them about our move to the high-rise condo and proceeded to block all contacts from his family. This new home was something we had earned with our hard work. We wanted to make a clear statement to his family, who had irresponsibly relied on us while constantly complaining and living leisurely. When Nick came home, I told him about the call from his mother. He had also received multiple calls on his cell phone but was unsure how to respond. I thought I couldn't abandon them because they are family, but I'm tired of dealing with them, Nick said, looking disheartened. He too seemed exhausted from his family's constant dependence. Subsequently, we changed our smartphone numbers and completely cut off contact with his family. Since we only told my mother-in-law that we were living in a high-rise condo, they wouldn't know our exact address. Afterward, Nick and I enjoyed peaceful days together, busy with our managerial roles but feeling fulfilled in our daily lives. Three years passed and Nick and I decided to check on his family's well-being after a long time. Since leaving the family home, Nick had not visited even during Thanksgiving or Christmas, so we had no idea how they were living. Upon arriving at the family home, we found no sign of Nick's family. The house was up for sale, and complete strangers were living there. Strange, where could everyone have gone? Nick wondered aloud. Encountering a friend of my mother-in-law who lived nearby, we decided to inquire about their recent circumstances. The events that unfolded at the family home over the three years then came to light. Lauren had returned for childbirth, claiming it was temporary, but in reality, she was already divorced and continued to live in the family home even after giving birth. Despite our departure, the addition of family members put further strain on the household finances. My mother-in-law began working part-time and Lauren soon put her child in daycare to start working, but their nights were filled with household chores and caregiving for the grandparents. The exhaustion from adding child care to their already busy lives was understandably unimaginable. Moreover, Nick's grandparents stopped going out in order to save money, but they both eventually developed dementia. 
My mother-in-law had no choice but to quit her job to focus on caregiving. But even with Lauren's help, there was a limit to what amateurs could do. Unable to withstand the situation, they quickly appealed to my father-in-law to move the grandparents to a facility. But my father-in-law and brother-in-law refused to listen to them. They were relying on the grandparents' pension and were reluctant to spend on facility costs. As a result, the family's opinions were divided. I can't stand this life anymore. I've reached my limit. Nick's mother cried out in agony and left the house with Lauren and her grandchild. Left alone, my father-in-law and brother-in-law couldn't take care of the dementia-ridden grandparents, and despite hiring helpers, they soon reached their limit. Eventually, they decided to place the grandparents in a facility, but by then, the family had fallen apart and no one returned home. Struggling to pay off the renovation loan, my father-in-law and brother-in-law ended up selling the house and moved elsewhere after paying off the loan. Hearing these stories, Nick showed a sad expression filled with mixed emotions. We asked the neighbors for the name of the facility where his grandparents were staying and decided to visit them soon. A few days later, a neighbor contacted Nick, relaying a message from my mother-in-law. Apparently, she had learned about our visit to the family home. According to her, my father-in-law and brother-in-law were living together and were paying for the grandparents' facility costs but they seldom visited them. My mother-in-law herself was living with Lauren and her grandchild, working part-time and still struggling with life. I can't stand this life anymore. Please let us live in a high-rise condo too. The neighbor conveyed her plea. Hearing such a request, we were just astonished. Nick too had grown wary of his family and stopped contacting the neighbor afterward. I don't intend to involve myself with my family anymore but I do want to keep an eye on grandpa and grandma until the end, he said. I agreed with his decision and supported him, focusing more on our work than ever, especially when Nick occasionally felt the loneliness of losing his family. Having overcome difficult times, we want to live even more happily from now on. We plan to cherish our current life, live peacefully, and consider having children in the future.